Hello everyone and welcome back! In this new lesson we're going to be adding pagination to our example Angular Material data table. So here in our component we already have here a data table displayed to the user, so now all we have to do is to add here a paginator to the bottom of it. Then we are going to integrate the component paginator with our backend data loading logic in order to fetch from the backend exactly the page of data that we need. Before doing that, we are going to need here the paginator in our template. So let's go ahead and let's add it in. The component that we are going to be using is the material paginator component. Let's add it some base styling. Let's just add a drop shadow to it. I'm going to use here the matte elevation Z8 class. This will give it a nice drop shadow. Let's specify here the page size of our paginator. So we want to load here pages of size free so that we have small pages that we can use in our simple example. And let's also define here the page size options. So this is going to be a small drop down in the paginator that is going to allow the user to choose which page size he wants. So let's give here a couple of different options. Let's say for example that the user can choose between pages of three elements, five elements and ten elements. And finally in order for the paginator to be able to work we need to pass in here as input the total number of items that we are paginating. We can grab this value here which is the length property from our course object. So our course object contains here a property called lessons count that is going to tell us how many lessons the course has. Using that information the paginator is going to be able to paginate through the lessons correctly. Before trying out the paginator to see what it looks like let's first remove it here from inside the table element where I've added it accidentally and instead let's put it outside the table element. And to further make sure that everything is correct let's take here both the table and the paginator, let's remove them and let's place them here inside our course div. So this is the container div of our component. Let's now have a quick look at what the paginator looks like. I'm going to switch here to a larger window. Let's go to the course screen and as we can see the paginator gets displayed here at the bottom of our table. The user has multiple options available, so here on the items per page we can see here the page sizes that we have configured and we can also see here the navigation buttons for our paginator. When these navigation buttons get clicked or whenever the user changes here the page size, a new event is going to get emitted by the paginator. So what we're going to do is we're going to capture that event which is going to be the page event and using the information about the page that the user has just selected we're going to then load the correct page from our backend. Let's then go back here to our component and see how we're going to do this. So the first thing that we're going to need is to grab a reference to the paginator. The paginator is an angular component that is part here of our component template. So the simplest way to grab a reference to the paginator is to use the view child decorator. Let's first start by defining here a paginator member variable which is going to be of type mat paginator. So this is our paginator component. Now in order to grab it from the template we are simply going to be using here the view child decorator and now we need to tell Angular how to grab a reference to this particular component. In this case we are going to simply tell Angular to grab the first reference of a material paginator present in our template. Now using the paginator we are going to be able to build our logic. So what we want to do is to detect the page events emitted by the paginator. If we would try to detect the page events here on ng on init this would not work because any member variables filled in by the view shell decorator are not yet present necessarily whenever we call ng on init but we can be sure that this type of member variables are always present at the after view init lifecycle phase. So by implementing here this lifecycle hook after view init we have here available a new method, this is a lifecycle hook ng after view init and inside this lifecycle hook we can be sure that our paginator member variable is populated. 
So we are going to be accessing here our paginator and from here we're going to be accessing here the page observable. So this emits page events. These are values that contain all the information necessary for loading the correct page. We are going to have here the current page selected by the user, the page size, etc. So let's grab here the page observable and let's simply subscribe to this observable. So here, as a side effect of the values emitted here by this observable, we are going to be loading a new page. So let's add here the tap side effect operator and let's load a new page. To do so, we are going to be calling here the load lessons page method. And for this particular implementation, we don't even have to pass in anything that we have received here as a page event, because this method here, load lessons page, also has access to the paginator. So it can grab everything that it needs from the paginator directly. So let's access here, for example, the paginator and let's grab here the current page index that we have available here. And we can also grab the page size selected by the user. Now we need to be a little bit careful here because maybe we are calling this method from somewhere in the component, like on ng on init, where the paginator is not yet available. So let's add here the Elvis operator just to make sure that we are not throwing here an error and let's provide here default values. So if the paginator is not available, let's load the first lesson of the course. And if the paginator is not available here, let's say that the page size is free, which is the initial page size of our component. And with this, we have finished the pagination logic of our data table. Let's have a look at it in action. So we have here our data table. We can see that the first page is getting correctly loaded as expected. And if we now try to navigate here to the second page, we should see lessons four, five and six. Let's see if that's the case. So we have here the correct lessons four, five and six. If we click again, we have seven and eight and nine as expected. If we click back, we have again the previous pages that we have already loaded. And if we select here, for example, page size of five, we get here the five first lessons as expected. As we can see, our pagination logic is working correctly. Let's now continue to improve our example data table. We are now going to be adding another very common feature of data tables, which is sorting capabilities.